a U.S. using the U.S. Marines as a cover for his sedition, in my opinion, period. Using them as a cover for his, sedition act, his seditious acts, sending them into harm's way to get him killed. So you wonder why, you wonder why I get so angry, because how could you not get angry looking at these people? This is not just a difference of, uh, let's say, a, a different political opinion or how to run a country. No, no, this is purely something else. When you look at the history of what this man has done, is doing, and still wishes to do, this is a subversive from his toenails to the hair on his head. This guy has sedition written in his DNA. And they can't stop him? Like heck they can't stop him. Let me tell you something, Jackson. They could stop ISIS yesterday and they could stop Obama tomorrow. All of the brave generals... Security people, brave men. Many of them are war heroes. They don't say a peep while they're in, while they have the, the they haven't got the pension. Put your pension on the line. If ten of you stood up, ten of you in DHS, NSA, CIA, defense stood up together, and gave a press conference as to what you really know is going on, and you risked your pension, you could save America. Say, well, why don't you do it? I do it every day. I do it every day. I don't know whether I'll be on the radio tomorrow for what I say. Do you know that? You don't know that. What do you think? I have total freedom. You're wrong. I answer to people. They don't call me, but I know what happens if I step over the line. And let me tell you something else. Every day I'm on the radio. I don't know if tomorrow. What do you think? I'm guaranteed. I don't own, I don't own the radio stations. I don't own the advertisers. I am putting my career on the line every time I step out and speak the truth. And that's why I want the generals, the intelligence agencies, I want you to meet those of you who know what's going on, it's actually a call. It's a plea to you. All of you who really know what's going on, who really know what Obama is and what he's doing and wants to do, and really know that he's not prosecuting the war against ISIS, but know a hundred times more than I'm saying to you right now. If ten of you got together, ten good men, and gave a press conference and said, we were forced to do this because the country's in, in grave danger. Here is what we know. Here is what must be done. You could save the country and the world. You say, well, what could 10 men really do? I want you to go to michaelsavage.com, and I want you to take a look at a picture. You know, last Wednesday I had on my show a man who was the leader of the um, Assyrian Christian Army. Remember he was on the show? Twelve men got together to form an army. And I gave a link to their website. They raised $35,000. Have you seen the picture that they put up? in the middle of a battlefield, men who look like you or your uncle, older men, some younger men. So in the middle of a battlefield, they're holding up a banner that says, God bless you, Michael Savage. It didn't make me feel good. It made me feel good that they could fight on to save their women and children from these cockroaches, these viruses in ISIS. And we in America are, should be sick that this seditious president of ours does nothing to help the Assyrian Christians, nothing whatsoever to help those suffering, their daughters being raped and killed, doesn't give them the chance to fight, doesn't help the Kurds, nothing, and gets away with it with his, with his uh, silk smooth act. Silk smooth act and all the Hollywood, the Hollywood subversives. I love these Hollywood subversives. They make hundreds of millions of dollars on their garbage movies, and then they spit on the America that gave them so much. Samuel L. Jackson, Jr., and you go to his movie like an idiot, you go sit there, him and Harvey Weinstein, what a pair they are. So you look at that, look what you can do with a thing like that. Oh, I forgot to tell you something else, by the way, while I'm at that, of what a few men can do. You, you do have to pay for what you believe in, incidentally. There's always a price. Yeah, there's a price. So don't sit there and wait for the pension and then go take a job with NBC as a general who speaks the truth finally. No, no, do it while you, while you didn't collect your pension. Do it while there's some risk. That's your real risk. It's more dangerous than jumping out of a plane and going into a battlefield. It's more dangerous to speak the truth in America than it is to be a war hero anymore in this country. We live in such a lockdown state of lies. It's worse than communist China. <clears throat> I was in an antique store here in Beverly Hills the other day. I forgot to mention it. It's late in the show already. It's an interesting, fast story. I was looking at this and that, uh, Chinese stuff, this stuff, French stuff. So the gentlemen who were running it were, uh, it was a, it was actually, uh, the, everyone was closed, they were open, they were Iranian. I didn't know it right away, but I assumed they were Iranian by the way they looked and the, the way they spoke. I just assumed they were, I knew they were, you know, from that region, and I figured they were Iranian, and one word led to the other. 
So uh, we talked over a Chinese incense burner, the price of it for a while. And as we talked, we got, I don't know how you get to know someone. You're, you're not talking politics at all, but soon you're talking politics. One word leads to the other. The guy says to me he was in an Iranian prison for two years. I don't know how it came up. I said, what, during Khomeini's reign of terror that Jimmy Carter brought to? He didn't believe that I knew all of this. He didn't know who I was. He didn't know I was Michael Savage talk shows. I said, oh, Khomeini did that to you. He said, yes. Jimmy Carter did it to you, yes. In other words, liberalism put this man in jail for two years. He said, I was 20 years old. He said, do you know what my crime was, what the Muslims did to me? I said, what, what'd you do? He said, what did I do? He said, at the time, Israel, Israelis were being killed by Palestinian murderers, suicide bombers. So the Israelis were trying to raise money for, for bomb sn sniffing dogs. He said, I sent $400 to Israel f to help them train a bomb sniffing dog. Then, he said, my second crime against the state of Iran, when the Muslim murderers took over, was this. They shot the most successful Iranian Jewish businessman in Iran, killed him for no reason, and I went to retrieve his body. They charged me for the bullets, and then they tried me for crimes against the state. And the charges were, I paid for a bomb-sniffing dog in Israel, and I retrieved the body of a, of a traitor. He said, they put me in a dark cell for two years. He said, I came to America in 1979 or 80, with $300 in my pocket. I've been working every day of my life to survive, and I don't complain about it. I said, sir, how many years had your family been in Iran? And I caught him by surprise, because it's an odd question for an Iranian, as any Persian or Iranian would understand. But by mere asking the question, it's a crazy question. He said, I don't know, 2,500 years? Think of the magnitude of the answer and the magnitude of the question. And I want you to understand what could happen to you in this country because of men like Barack Obama and women like Hillary Clinton. If you think it can't happen here, my friends, those who do not know their history are condemned to repeat it. I'm Michael Savage, and I'll proudly be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C. I'm going to put out an appeal right now on the Savage Nation that I've never done in my 20-some-odd years, 21 years in radio. I am going to appeal. Listen carefully. This is for a very small number of men or women in this large audience of ours. If you are a current, and I say current, not former, member of the FBI or any of the other intelligence agencies that really knows what's going on and wishes you could tell the world what is really going on and what needs to be done to save America before it's too late, you can do it. You can call the show. You can change your voice, you can get a, a voice, something or other. You can put a tish, a napkin over it. I don't care what you do. I need you to call the show tomorrow. Because if enough of you do this on a regular basis, I'm telling you, we can rip the mask off Obama, we can tear the mask off Hillary, we can rip the mask off George Soros, we can tear the mask off all the phonies who are supposed to be protecting us, who are not doing their jobs. And then maybe, just maybe, we can pull this out. Maybe, just maybe, we can win and save our children from a terrible fate. Because I will tell you something. You look at Iran. That country was a wonderful, great, advanced civilization for thousands of years. Persia was. People lived in phenomenal, phenomenal ways. They gave so much to the world. And then radical Islam was allowed to uh, infect Iran. And it was the radicalism of Khomeini, who had been in exile, driven out of Iran, driven into exile. It came back because Jimmy Carter, psychopathic, liberal, psychotic that he is, a double psychotic, a triple psychotic leftist, overthrew the Shah of Iran, who was as tough and as mean as they come, by the way. Mean and tough, just like the King of Jordan. Just like Assad, incidentally. And the same things you're hearing about Assad was said about the Shah of Iran. And look what happened to Iran when they overthrew the Shah. I heard all about it. The Savak and how bad they were to the Muslims. I heard the whole thing. Same thing you heard about Assad. Same thing that you hear about any strong man in any nation 
where Islam, radical Islam, is trying to infect the nation. And so Jimmy Carter overthrew the Shah of Iran, undermined them. He brought Khomeini out of exile from London. And then the virus of radical Islam is now spread around the world like a cancer. Like a cancer that keeps spreading. You can blame liberalism. You can blame Jimmy Carter. 